Hey guys, welcome back to Sobac Sports, and I'm so back with another video, and this is part two in the series of what they need to do, and before I get into the rest of this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps me out a lot, and it really helps me create content like this for you guys, so please subscribe, and today I want to talk about the Washington Commanders, and what they need to do in order for them to be successful in the upcoming 2024 season. It's not saying that it's an easy improvement, but at least they have to take some steps in towards that. So. Let's quickly look at some statistics, right? So, as of right now, Sam Howell, this past season, sat at 3.9K passing yards. Sam Howell started off the season great. You know, he was leading the league in passing yards for, like, I want to say eight or nine weeks until he kind of fell off a lot near the end of the season. And you can see right here, the touchdown-to-interception ratio is alarming. It's like near Jameis Winston level uh, 50-50, you know, and yeah, that, it didn't look good for him near the season. I, I remember Jacoby Brissett was brought in multiple times during the season. Like, he didn't do much, but he got like three touchdowns and that was really it. It was just like garbage time, really. But, you know, Sam Howell, say all what you want about him. He's not really their solution. Um, You know, he's going to be there. He's going to probably be the quarterback where if they do end up drafting a quarterback they're probably going to fight it out during camp uh if anything so speaking of the quarterback they're going to take let's go to the mock draft all right so the mock draft states that uh the washington commanders are going to probably take a quarterback which is probably right right but they have a lot of areas that they need to address before they can become relevant again and that's going to be tough because with the number two overall pick you know you have you don't know when your next pick is. Or let's let's check. Let's actually check real quick. Um. Oh, that's not, not it. Um. So speaking of, they have a lot of picks this year. They have our uh, the Chicago Bears second round pick. They can use that. They have a second round thirty sixth overall pick. They have a decent amount they can do in the draft. So as you can see right here, they need an edge rush. They're probably going to take a tight end, uh, Cedric Renpran, offensive line, and linebacker. I think right now they need to focus on two things really: quarterback question. And getting an offensive line. And maybe like part two of the things I need to focus on, uh, like part A, is a wide receiver room. If they end up, I'm pretty sure Terry McLaurin is a free agent. I could be wrong. Oh, Curtis Samuel is. Never mind. So Curtis Samuel is a free, under, uh, unrestricted free agent. Uh, under contract, Terry McLaurin is there. So you're kind of fine. Um, and... I think he'll be okay, and let's just see what else is there. Um, yeah, me personally, I would focus on offensive line. You know, you want to if you're going to take in a Drake May, if you're going to take in a Jaden Daniels, you need to focus on building a QB friendly offense. And what do I mean by that? You already added a new head coach in uh, Dan Quinn, which isn't necessarily like life-changing it's like he's a defensive minor head coach but you know it's fine that's not the like best hire i already made a video about that but um and two you have cliff kingsbury as your offensive coordinator I'm not saying he's like super game-changing he's going to be like automatically make him make whoever's at quarterback amazing but he has experience with kyler murray he's had experience with uh, working at quarterbacks with uh like patrick mahomes in texas tech uh caleb williams in uh usc and etc cetera, etc cetera. so he has that experience so focusing on creating an environment that will help will definitely create a great offense and now you're trying to shift the culture because this past off se past season was like okay the first season removed of dan snyder now we have to focus on you know, what we can we do to build upon the future? You got to build it slowly, but surely brick by brick, you know, and it's not going to be easy. So let's see who they're, they're going to take. So and in terms of like their teams, the team itself is pretty like overall pretty decent. Like in terms of free agents, like they have um, Jacoby Brissett's under a free agent. Kendall Fuller is a free agent. Um left tackle is also a free agent so if you depending on who you end up bringing back you probably need to address that and from the offensive line standpoint and you know they have uh cap alleg okay let's see their cap all right so they have a lot of money to work with and 
that's amazing for them because if you want to go out and get uh you know some edge rushers because after giving out Montez Sweat and Chase Young you kind of are in need of pass rushers for the defensive side that you can use for um uh with the money you have here but I will say if you want to focus on offensive line, I would also probably use the money as well because you can use the money here. You could also use the draft money, draft capital as well and kind of get yourself a decent makeshift offensive line. Um, that's going to be really what's important for this team because, like, if you want to... I Because, I, like, think about it, right? It's, it's really already hard enough for Sam Howell because he's already getting sacked a lot, you know? What makes you think that... Drake May and Jaden Daniels are going to have a great time, right? So, and also, if you're t- thinking about um, bringing in a new quarterback, I would still keep Sam Howell solely because, you know, let them fight it out during training camp. Let, let Make sure that, you know, if uh, Sam Howell gets all the reps as possibly can, and then if it's not working, put in uh, Jaden Daniels or Drake May, all right? And... All in all, it's it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be so tough because, like, as you can see, uh, contract wise, Deron Payne is your highest paid. Jonathan Allen, they're they're probably you're probably sticking with it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong because I honestly could be. Um, and you know, Johan Dotson, he's been pretty solid as a wide receiver. They've drafted and he's here till. 2027 your wide receiver room is okay it's not the best but i think you just keep developing it it'll be fine and just spend the money like that's all i could really say because you know they are you're going to be really cool with like a solid offense and whether it amounts to wins isn't necessarily too bad because like if you know that you have a foundation you can definitely build upon that and I think at that point, it makes it the most different. Then, in a couple of more years, you're going to be a great team to reckon with. Because the, the NFC East, as it stands right now, you have the Dallas Cowboys, who are still in contention for the playoffs. Philly is still in contention, even though they kind of fell off. Giants are, and you are both, the Commanders are both in that state of limbo right now. Whereas the Giants still have some questions, but it's not as, like, like insanely open as the Washington Commanders. Um yeah, like overall this team has been ups and downs and while you have like Byron Pringle still on the ro- roster, like you have a lot of defensive p- p- pieces you need to address, edge rusher specifically. And then what else do you have to do? I mean, wide receiver, if you could find a wide receiver that drops down to you, I would probably take one. Uh, kind of build it if Curtis Samuel ends up leaving, which is probably most likely because he is a free agent from what I remember. Um, yeah, Logan Thomas is your tight end. Maybe consider a tight end too. But let's see what happens because the thing is, it all really depends on who f- what, who wants to end up in the situation in the Washington Command. I feel like if you start a culture change, which is going to be tough, it's not going to be the most prettiest thing in, from the get-go, but a culture change is definitely needed. And this is the way to start. And as you can see, I ha- I pulled up a person that literally mentioned, like, they have a litany of things that they need to look into. Um, you know, Fuller is a free agent. Uh, Gibson's out of contract. Free agent's a draft. Larson's out of a contract. Like, you have to address a lot. And this is what? Uh, offensive line. Running back, which you're kind of okay with. Samuel, Curtis Samuel, I already mentioned that. Um, defensive end. Uh, middle linebacker. Cornerback. There's a lot of things. Slot receivers. This person has been saying like they need, they've been needing a slot receiver. And I think, you know, getting in one in free agency could be really good too. So yeah, I mean, overall, I think they have a s- decent path. I think with the new management, the new GM, they're going to do a good job or at least a decent job to get this team somewhat relevant at the end of the day. Because I think the what fans really want is really relevance and I think they can do it. I mean, honestly, just make sure your offense. So let's con- let's recap. Offensive line, quarterback, and then wide receiver, and then focus on defense. That's my go-to things of what they need to do. And yeah, that's it for this video. Please let me know down in the comments below what you think. Do you 
Do you like what I said? Or is there anything else I need forgot or forgot to add? Uh, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to read them. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.